We should be striving to give the people of Georgia fair access to the ballot box. We just saw an election in November where the people of Georgia made it clear that they want to use Saturday voting. Hundreds of thousands of voters, Georgia voters, voted on Saturday. They have demonstrated what they want. And there's nothing in the law as it is currently written to prevent it. As the Georgia Senate runoff campaign kicks into high gear, Senator Raphael Warnock announced today that he is filing a lawsuit to allow Georgians to vote early on the Saturday after Thanksgiving. Because of a law Republicans passed in 2016, it is currently illegal in Georgia to have early voting on any day that immediately follows a state holiday. And Friday, November 25th, is technically a state holiday, celebrating the birthday of none other than Confederate general and literal traitor Robert E. Lee. That one day of voting is even more essential after the Republicans' Jim Crow 2.0 law passed last year, cutting the state's runoff calendar in half. It used to be nine weeks. Now it's down to four. Joining me now is Democratic Senator John Ossoff of Georgia. Um, and, and I do want to ask you about that. It, it, what is the level of concern among Georgia Democrats that cutting off that final Saturday of voting, it's hard enough to get people to come out for a special election. How concerned are you and fellow state Georgia state Democrats that it's going to hurt the turnout of um, folks who want to reelect Warnock. Joy, good evening, and thank you for having me. And we are determined to ensure that every eligible voter in Georgia has the opportunity to participate in this process. You just heard from Senator Reverend Warnock there. Hundreds of thousands of Georgians availed themselves of Saturday early voting uh, during the general election. We're encouraging every Georgian to make a plan now to vote in this runoff. Remember that the election law that Georgia Republicans passed last year in some ways had the most significant impact on runoff election administration with uh, a shorter early vote period, for example. We are encouraging all Georgians to make a plan to vote now, and I sincerely hope that the outcome of this court process is that Georgians can take advantage of a chance to vote on Saturdays. You know, your election and uh, Senator Warnock's election in 2021, it, it was to be proof that every vote counts and that who represents you matters. You just passed, and I want to congratulate you on a bipartisan bill that you authored to investigate unsolved lynchings and civil rights cold cases. It has now passed the House. It's headed to the president's desk. It's arguable nothing like that would have passed under your predecessors. And so I think about some of the opportunities that are there if there is that 51st vote. And that's things like um, code of abortion rights. We know abortion's a big deal. A judge just overturned your state's six-week abortion ban. Um, protecting voting rights, police reform, gun reform legislation. None of that has any chance, even maybe in a 50-50 Senate. So are you, is that the case that's being made to Georgia voters, that that 51st seat might be the difference between getting those things and not? Well, look, let me just add, in addition to the civil rights cold case legislation uh, that you just talked about, which passed the House yesterday and is now on its way to the president's desk, without our victories in Georgia in January of 2021, there would be no Justice Ketanji Brown Jackson. There would be no bipartisan infrastructure law. We would not have done more to strengthen veterans' health care than any Congress in decades. Nor would we have been able to engage in the kind of vigorous oversight and investigation of human rights abuses, of corruption, and of misconduct in the federal government, for example, that I've led as chair of the Permanent Subcommittee on Investigations. Today, we held a hearing, the result of an 18-month bipartisan investigation that exposed the truth about what's been happening to detainees held by the Department of Homeland Security who were subjected to unnecessary, invasive, and often non-consensual gynecological surgical procedures, serious abuses of constitutional and human rights. So it's not just the legislative capacity. It's also our ability to investigate abuse, corruption, and misconduct. And, and by the way, we have, a, we have a sound bite on that. Let me just play a little bit of that. And this is one of the former detainees, just what you're talking about, speaking about her experiences uh, with ICE. Take a look. The nurse told me I was going to get a pap smear. When the day came, they handcuffed me. They put a chain around my waist, all the way down to my ankles. When Dr. Amin comes in, he doesn't acknowledge me. He doesn't say a word. 
he just sits in front of me and starts prepping for the procedure, which he does not explain. Then he just says, open your legs, and continues with, it's going to be cold, and inserts a white tube inside of me. He wiggles it around roughly. It's horrifying, and this investigation is, is chilling. And I, just to make it very clear, as you said, this investigation would not have happened had your two predecessors, yours and Raphael Warnock's predecessors, been in the United States Senate, because Repub Republicans would have controlled the committees, no? Well, oversight really matters, Joy. And as you know, I ran for the Senate on a pledge to investigate abuse, corruption, misconduct and violations of human rights. And that is what I have done as the chair of the Permanent Subcommittee on Investigations. I have to say, and folks who just saw that testimony from Karina today, and there are dozens of women who went through what she went through, dozens of women who were subjected to unnecessary, invasive, dangerous surgical procedures while in the custody of the U.S. government. That's exactly the kind of oversight that the U.S. Congress should be undertaking. It took 18 months of bipartisan work to get there. And yes, without those victories in Georgia, we would not be in a position to conduct this oversight. And I'm going to continue conducting this oversight so long as I chair this subcommittee. Do you believe very quickly that Herschel Walker would have any interest in, in participating in these kinds of investigations if he were the senator, the other senator from Georgia, rather than Senator Warnock? I have no idea except to say this. The contrast in quality, in competence, in preparedness between Senator Warnock and his opponent is the most dramatic I have ever seen in electoral politics. Senator Warnock is an asset to this nation. He has won universal respect across the aisle in the Senate. He's gotten a lot done for Georgia, forging bipartisan relationships to do it. We cannot lose him. We will not lose him. And that's why we're encouraging Georgians to make a plan to vote. Senator John Ossoff, thank you very much. Really appreciate you being here and the work that you've done on those investigations. Thank you.